the church say amen let the church say amen death is defeated jesus is risen this is our faith the good news of grace oh let the church say amen Carrie and Cody, it's good to see you guys. You too. Man, it's so good to be here, Carrie, listening to these new songs and talking about them. And this is one of my favorites. I remember when you first sent over a batch of songs, there was a lot of demos and things that you guys were working on. And uh, this was one early on that I had really like circled. I was like, man, I love what this song says. It's just for the church. And, and it feels like one of those songs. It's, it's timeless in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, and so, Cody, maybe we start with you a little bit uh, just on the writing side and talk about the song, a little bit of the themes behind it, and yeah. what was inspiring you when you wrote it. Yeah, so this song, the, the heart of it was to really uh, pack the simple gospel truths that we believe as the church, the things that really unite the church together. Because um, there's all different facets of the church, but mm -hmm. what are the things that we all believe, we all agree on? What are the things we can all unify around? And I think that unity... Uh, piece is so important, especially right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we wrote this song a couple years ago, but uh, I love that it's coming out right now because, you know, Psalm 133 says, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It's mm -hmm. there the Lord commands his blessing. And I think we're going to see the power of, of God in the church come even stronger than we've ever seen it before in a time where we're unified. And so I, this song is really, that's the heart of it. It's what do we believe about Jesus being Savior, Redeemer, that he's returning, um, that death is defeated, Jesus is risen. Uh, this is our faith, the good news of grace. Let the church say amen. You know, getting around those, those unifying things. And that's really what the verse and the chorus is built on. Um, and then the bridge is really, what are the things that we're united in praying for? 
What, were, what are the things that we're united as the church that we want to see and that we will see happen as people come to know Jesus, as we, as we get closer and closer to heaven, as we experience more heaven on earth? What are those things? And it's the lost will come home, the bound will go free, the weak will be strong, the broken redeemed. And it makes me think of that Isaiah 61 scripture that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. That's what we believe as the church, that as we unify together and God commands his blessing there, we're more like Jesus and we're able to see people come home to Jesus and captives be set free and, and the hungry feast and all of those things. And so it's really just like a rally cry kind of song, I think, for the church, especially right now. Like this is what we believe. This is what we can unify around and we will see the glory of God. Let the church say amen. Amen means let it be so. Mm. And so this bridge, coming out of this bridge, declaring all these prayers, uh, to come right out of that and say, let the church say amen. It's like, let these things be so in our cities, in our communities, and all around us. Wow. Yeah, I love the fact that, I mean, you guys wrote this two years ago, like you said. Yeah. But then, like, what a time for a song. I love how yeah. God just drops songs in. It's like knowing that we're going to need to hear it. Yes. We're going to need to sing it as a church. And, the, Carrie, that bridge really feels like that's where the song, like, that's the the rallying cry yeah. for the church and talk about this, because I know you, you've had a chance to lead this a few, I mean, yeah. before things shut down. <laughs> right. This was one of the only ones I got to lead live with people and kind of test it out and see what it felt like. And every time we'd kick into that bridge, people would just scream mm -hmm. out and yell out, like, in agreement. And, uh, you know, to be reminded of the simple gospel of the truth of the Word of God, what we believe, there's just so much power in that. And um, it's really fun to watch people come alive singing that and declaring that. And, you know, and my favorite part is when it gets to the bottom where it's like revival is now, the kingdom is here. That is so, it's just so good to be reminded of that all the time, that there's something way bigger going on when we are living kingdom lives. And especially it impacts people around us. It, for someone to hear a song that, that they can come and they can be healed and set free, they They'd be able to feast. And these are revelations that maybe those that have been in the in a Christian or a believer for a long time, we forget the power and the truth of what that really means. Yeah. And so I think this song also is like a salvation uh, song for someone to, to hear it and say, wow, um, I want to believe those things. I yeah. want that for my life too. And so amen, simple gospel is the title of the song. And I think that's exactly what it's going to do for people. Yeah. Wow. And I love that unity theme. It, it feels like God is sowing that that theme throughout. You know, there's been a few songs even recently that, you know, have written around the theme of unity. Yeah. And, and if, if anything, I think 2020 taught us is like that made the church come together. Yeah. You know, through the hardship, even families yeah. made all of us like pull closer together to the people we care about. And uh, the church has been the same way. Yeah. And sure. so um, having songs like this for the church, whether they're meeting now, whether they're going to come back together later this year to be able to come together and say, these are the things that we believe yeah. and we're unified in that. It's such a powerful thing. Yeah. Wow. Well, Cody, walk us through your capo way. I don't even know way what you're there. <laughs> I like caping up here sometimes because it just gives the acoustic a really like crystal kind of clear top into it. And uh, I'm playing a lot of 16th notes on this song. So that's kind of why I did it, just so mm -hmm. it cuts through. I'm playing in uh, G on the seventh fret. The song's in D. So you could play it just as easy in D, but... I'll talk in G shapes here. So it starts on the G on the verse to the C, back to the G, back to the C, and then the E minor, and then the D, and then back to the top. And at the end, you do that all over again, and then at the very end, it does a little tag, a walk down from the E minor. The D to the C, and then onto the chorus. It's similar but a little different. So it's the G to the C, back to the G to the D, E minor, C, and then G over B to the D, back to the G. And then the bridge is easy, it's just um, the E minor, 
to the sea. And then the first time through, first two times through, you go to the G, and then the D. And then on three and four, as it builds, you replace the G with a G over B. Just a little more tension, so it's an E minor to the C, and then replace it here, G over B, and then the D again. Awesome. Amazing song. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for sharing it with us. And what a, what a song for the church right now. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen.